Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. We continue talking about different units of measurements in physics related to the system, um, standard system, which is called C. Um, today we will talk about electricity and uh, basic concepts of electricity um, and how they are measured. Now, this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens, presented on Unizor.com. Um, I suggest you to watch this lecture from this website because the lectures are hierarchically arranged, well, logically, sequentially, so to speak. And uh, in this particular part of the course, when I'm talking about units of measurement, I'm introducing new units always based on whatever has been introduced before. So it's a hierarchical kind of a building, like, a, like we built the building. First fun, uh, fundamental kind of base, basement, whatever, and then the first floor, the second floor, etc. So everything uh, is based on whatever has been done uh, already. And in this case, I will use the concepts which have already been introduced before as the base to introduce new units of measurements for new concepts which we are talking about, in this case, electricity. Okay, <coughs> now the first um, concept we will talk about today is electric charge. So, electric charge um, well, electric charge is basically related to electrons as we know. If number of electrons exceeds the number of protons in the atom, we are talking about negative electric charge. And if, on the other hand, uh, there is a deficiency of electrons, this is called the positive electric charge. Now, question is how to measure these charges. Well, some time ago, um, people wanted to measure them just by the number of electrons. So a certain number of electrons in excess of number of protons in that particular object uh, would be a unit of measurement of electric charge. Later on decided to do it differently. <coughs> we have already introduced a concept of um, electric current and the unit ampere. One ampere. So, using this particular um, unit of measurement, the amount of electric charge would be uh, measured by the electric current and the time during which it actually exists. So, if you have a conductor and there is a current, which is 1 ampere. Amount of electric charge going from one place to another in one second is 1 coulomb. So, one coulomb is one ampere times second. Now, to tell you the truth, personally, I consider certain number of electrons to be a unit, like one coulomb, would be more natural for me. But in any case, physicists decided to do it from the other way. And then you can d d define ampere as coulomb per second. But they have decided to do it other, the other way around for different purposes. Uh, primarily because uh, I think there are very nice and precise tools to measure the current and uh, how can you count the electrons. That's not very easy, right? So because of, probably because of this, I'm not really sure, 
um, they have decided first we will define as a primary, as a base unit, an ampere, and then times a second, that would be uh, amount of electric charge. Now, if electrons are going away, so if this is object, and electrons are going away with certain current, that means that this object is being charged positively. So if this flow of electrons is one ampere, then during one second, this thing will have plus one coulomb. If the other way around, if electrons are going into the object, making excess of electrons, which means negative. So if the flow of electrons is one ampere, then in one second it will be uh, minus one coulomb. So this will be plus one coulomb. This will be minus one coulomb. So this is all about electric charge. So basically the unit is coulomb, and coulomb means certain um, ampere and times time, amperage and time, current, uh, electric current uh, times uh, number of seconds, basically. So if 5 ampere is acting during 10 seconds, it would be 50 coulombs. Okay, so that's all about coulombs. Electric charge. Next is voltage. <coughs> so, how can we define a volt? Well, <coughs> let's think about this way. Let's consider you have electri electrostatic field. For example, you have uh, some negatively charged point object, so around it we have electrostatic field. Now, if you have certain test object and it has certain charge, now if it's negative, now my source of this electrostatic field is, I was saying, it's negative, right? And if my test object is also negative, there is a repulsion, certain force, right? Now, if my test object is positive, there is an attraction, also the force. So, there is a force acting on this object. So, if it moves, it does certain amount of work. Now, this work can be performed by the field itself, uh, or it can be performed by outside force against the field. Doesn't really matter. Somebody or something does the work. If the object if charged object moves in the electrostatic field, either the field or some outside force um, forces it to move. Some, something does the job, something does performs work, which can be measured. And that's very, very kind of familiar now, um, familiar grounds. So we have joules. as amount of work performed. And we have coulombs as measure of how much electric charge this test object has. Well, great. So, one um, volt one volt is a difference in potential, well, it's a potential energy, right? Because at every point, object has a potential energy because, again, if we will release it, it will move either towards the source of uh, the field or, or outside. So there is a potential energy. And so what we are saying is that one volt is a difference in potential en energy if one particular um, joule of energy is needed to move from A to B one coulomb of uh, electrically charged um, object. So if you have a test object of one coulomb and it takes amount of work one joule 
to move it from point A to point B uh, within electrostatic field. Now we are saying that there is a voltage, there is a difference in potential between these points A and B. Voltage is just a different word. It's different of potential energy, same thing. So there is a voltage which can be measured as it's equal to one volt. So if one joule is required to move from A to B one coulomb of electricity, then we are saying that the difference in potential is equal to one volt. So this is basically um, uh, the definition of the unit of measurement of the difference uh, of electric potential or voltage between two different points. Okay, so that's done. So we always think about voltage as certain amount of work needed to move from A to B certain charge. Okay. Now, the last, the last thing is resistance. Now, imagine you have a conductor and for whatever way we want, we maintain certain difference of potential um, between two ends. So you have A and B. Now this is conductor and there is certain voltage here, constant. How we do it doesn't really matter. Now, why do I need conductors? Well, because electrons are moving. So our object, so to speak, would be electrons. Now, um, imagine what happens with electrons as they are moving. Well, they, they actually meet certain resistance from whatever is in the conductor. It's not easy to move in between the atoms when atoms are actually trying to grab you, etc. Just imagine these small electrons and nucleus all around. So, what we are saying is the following. If the current observed between A and B is equal to 1 ampere and the voltage is equal to 1 volt, well, pay attention, we have already defined the volt before. So that's always like this. We define something and then define something else based on whatever we have already defined. So volt was defined, ampere was defined. That's the base unit of a few, a few lectures ago. So if the difference of potential of one volt produces one ampere of current within this conductor, we are saying that it has one ohm OHM and this is the Greek letter Omega, capital. We are saying that resistance of this particular uh, conductor is equal to one um, ohm. So, basically we are talking about the Ohm's law, which means R is equal to u over i. Remember, this is the difference of potential or voltage, this is the current, and this is uh, resistance. We're talking about this when we're talking about electricity properties of the currents, etc., etc. So, again, I would like to basically tell you where the units are coming from. The unit of ohm comes from unit of um, current and unit of voltage. So again, it's all hierarchically built. One unit based on whatever has been already defined before. That's how the whole mathematics is built. Uh, axioms, then the first kind of level of theorems, then the theorems based on the previous theorems, etc., etc. Same thing in physics. New um, concepts are introduced based on whatever 
has been already introduced. And the new units of measurements are strictly arranged in the same logical sequence. That's why it's important to watch these lectures about units in the sequence presented on unizor.com. And by the way, unizor.com is a totally free website. Um, you can take exams, by the way, there if you want to. You don't have to um, sign in if you don't want to. And uh, there are no advertisements. So I do suggest you to watch all these lectures from unizor.com. That's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.